Hello to Darkness344 here, and in today's video I'll be showing off this um, analog um, input panel. So we can input a value over here, so from 1 to 15, of course um, it stores the signal strength. So say we just input a value like this over here, um, it should update the memory cell, which will then output, um, and I've just got it plugged into this red coder over here. So this is quite useful for different um, input devices I guess so um, of course I just got it laid out in a line but you can do a slightly more fancy thing um, where you have um, a nicer looking input like this um, with all your buttons on and if you do it in a clever way you can have a fairly flush input panel without having to run an individual wire for each um, button you have so as you can see we only have one wire and this is um, able to transmit data for all 15 buttons. We can press any input along this wire and we'll be able to get it as an output over here and um, our cell will automatically update to that new value and we'll store it. So this means we don't need uh, any sort of reset switch, we just press the button and it will um, output our value. It will automatically reset the cell and it will output. So how does this work? Well you'd think it would be quite simple um, because you can just make a very simple hexadecimal storage cell using two comparators uh, looping into each other, um, for instance like this. And while that's partially correct, the problem is, say we want to update the value. So for instance, let's just put in a signal strength like this, and it will store the signal strength indefinitely. But say we then put in a higher signal strength, well that's fine and all, uh, we've been up, we update the cell to the higher signal strength, but then say we want to put in that lower signal strength again, it's not working. And that's because higher signal strengths will overwrite lower signal strengths. And because the cell is always storing this higher signal strength, we cannot overwrite it with the lower signal strength. Well, how can we fix this? Well, our cell over here, we can actually put one of these comparators onto subtract mode. And this means when we pass a signal strength into the side, it's going to do whatever in signal strength is being passed into its main input minus the one on the side. So for instance, say we pass in a full signal strength of 15, let's just use a repeater to demonstrate this, and we're going to pass in a full signal strength of 15. It doesn't matter whatever signal strength we pass in this side, it's always going to have 15 taken away from it, meaning that even if we have the full signal strength, so 15 of course, so let's just represent that by this lever over here, 15 minus 15 is 0, so we're just going to get 0 as the output. So, and say we had 14 uh, being input, so that's actually still 15, so 14 over here being input, we still get 0 out because 14 minus 15 is minus 1, um, and of course we don't have negative signal strength, so we're just going to um, get 0 as our output. So now let's actually integrate this into our circuit, so if we just place our input back again using some comparators like this. Um, we use two comparators because if we have um, only one comparator as well as our repeater, whenever we input a signal it's going to activate at the same time cancelling it out. But if we use two comparators on this side like this, um, let's just use a block for now and we'll put some blocks like that. So I'm just going to just put a lever like this and then what we can do is if we activate this, as you can see the cell gets reset but we have another problem. So this cell is flashing. Um, while it does save the signal strength and we can take that as an output to our next subsystem, um, it's a flashing signal, it's not actually steady and this is kind of annoying. So what we can do um, is place some comparators on the other side as well, not a rocket, like this. And then when we put our input in, what's going to happen is both these comparators get input at the exact same time, meaning we don't have that flashing problem. So let's look at the order um, that our input goes to the comparators and see why this works. So if we go from the input and count how many um, devices it has to pass through, we have one comparator, two comparator, and then to our um, memory cell. Now, um, at least this comparator of the memory cell. Now if we look at the other side, we have one comparator, two comparator, to uh, that comparator over there. So this is the same, but say we didn't have this side, let's just remove it again. Now let's count how many comparators we have. So one comparator, two comparator to this one. But now for this one, it has one comparator, two comparator, three comparator, because it also has to pass through this to get to that signal. So 
we can just put, put some comparators on both sides like this and it fixes the problem. So now if we want to run an input to the device, well if we just place um, a piece of redstone dust like this, these ones aren't going to get the signal anymore and if you replace them with um, redstone dust, the signal strength is going to degrade. So we want to keep these blocks here. So there's several ways of doing this. Either you go down a block like this and you have your comparator, so this should work fine. Or what you can do is use target blocks and just replace um, them with target blocks, these solid blocks with target blocks. Now this works because the signal strength is being redirected um, into the target blocks. For input, we can just leave it as a line or you can place a comparator here and then have your input over here. You can, of course, this, this doesn't matter how long it takes to reach the device, it's always going to um, save the signal. So if, even if we have a bunch of time in between our input and um, the signal traveling to the device, so we'll just simulate that by these four comparators, um, the cell will still update to the new value. So now I just placed down a couple of levers to, um, for our inputs. Now let's actually um, make the output. So um, you can either make the output here, but you kind of like minus one signal strength, but I like putting it on this side over here because um, it already has this block over here and we can just run our line like this. So it's kind of flashing, but that's because I think we just need to send in another signal. So if we just go like this, um, it should stop flashing. There we go. Now we can either run this line into a display out like this, or you could run it into a red coder. So what a red coder will do is when we um, put in an input, um, of course we input over here, what's going to happen is it will just only output the value of that hexadecimal value. Whereas a display like this will just um, have is kind of like an accumulative design so so it'll light up multiple lamps this one will only light up the very specific lamp so of course I'll just show you how to build one of these I have done a tutorial on one in the past but this is a slightly smaller design um, though it does have a slight issue where the lamps will flicker as you transition between different values though of course my one doesn't have that issue um, so I think there's a tutorial on it somewhere on my channel so let's build it. First of all, we're going to place a comparator like this, then going into another one, which is on subtract mode. Then we place a resin torch or signal strength at 15. So I'll just use a lever that's on over here. And then we can build um, the tower. So you have to use stone slabs because the signal is only allowed to go up. It's not allowed to go down um, because that's just the way the design works. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to place a bunch of target blocks up like this to make the slabs a bit easier to place. So we're going to have 15 slabs. So 1, 2, 3, 13, 14, 15. I, th I think we need 15 slabs. I'm not entirely sure. It might be 14. Uh, let's just place our redstone down as well like that. And then we're going to break um, any target block that is um, on the same block as the on the same level as the slab. So that'll be this one, then this one, then this one. As you can see, they're all on the same level. And we're just going to repeat this for the whole thing. So now that we've done this, we'll place redstone torches on the inside. So let me get one of those. And we're going to place it on the inside of these target blocks like this. Now, of course, we need some sort of output so we can use redstone lamps and we'll just place them on the redstone torches like this. And the last thing we want to do is make sure we have the correct number of outputs. So 1, 2, 3, 13, 14, 15. And I built one extra, so I'm just going to break this uh, like that. So now that I've just broken the 16th one, um, let's actually try this. So let's just put in a signal strength of 15. And as you can see, 15 turns on. Let's put in a signal strength of 1. And as we can see, 1 turns on. Now let's just put in a middle signal strength, so I'm not exactly sure what this is, probably 6 or 7 or something like that. Um, and as we can see, what's going to happen is we have our signal strength being output here. It gets um, inverted by this one over here, which will power up um, all these redstone torches. So it'll turn all these redstone torches off, as you can see, from this tower over here until it runs out of signal strength, which will be our corresponding value. So as you can see, um, it goes up here, runs out of signal strength here, meaning this redstone torch turns on, powering our lamp, being our output. However, um, of course, this signal strength um, still doesn't go to the rest of them, um, meaning all the other lamps above would turn on. But because our redstone torch powers the block above it, which goes back into the um, slab tower, 
that new signal strength, so the full signal strength now of 15 because of the resonant torch, um, will travel up and turn off um, all the resonant torches on the other lamps. Meaning only our specific lamp we selected is turned on. So yeah, that's just how this design works. But we now have our input panel and an output over here. So yeah, I hoped this video was useful. Um, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And I'm out.